new computer using the new Zen 3 uh, Ryzen 5000 series. So we have a Ryzen 5 5600X and uh, that's that's the most exciting part of this build. Otherwise it's pretty pretty general mainstream uh, I guess mid-range build. Some of these parts I've sort of collected over the last year uh, really in anticipation of these new chips. And we have the Dan A4 case. So this is going to be a very compact mini ITX build. And then we're going to benchmark it against the new M1 Mac Mini that you see there on the corner. So some of these parts I've really sort of been collecting over the last year uh, in anticipation of these new Ryzen chips. So uh, video card prices are crazy right now. And I actually didn't want the power constraints or the costs associated with the new like 3080 or 6800. So I have a 5700 that I've been using and that's what's gonna go in this. And I just wanted to keep this, you know, a little more moderate build. Uh, it's not quite so crazy and really keep costs down, but still see what kind of performance we can get. So along with that, we have um, 16 gigs, um, crucial memory, and it is uh, uh, the CAS, you know, 16, 3600, which is typically recommended for Ryzen processors a um, Western Digital Black 750. I am curious to get the new 850 that came out, obviously, and take advantage of the PCI Express 4 bus. Um, but they're kind of pricey, and I already had this, so we'll just be using this one. I might upgrade later. And of course, the most exciting things with the Ryzen 5, and I'm using Gigabyte's uh, B55 Pro AX. It has Wi-Fi 6. That's a mini ITX board, and it's typically reviewed as one of the best ones. Now, since we are using the Dan A4, and I'll unbox that in just a second, um, I wanted to keep power and, and sort of things in check. So I'm not trying to do some crazy uh, cooling in order to make it work. I'm just sticking with, you know, a 65 watt processor. So that is why I went with the Ryzen 5, not the new 7 or 9, like 5900 or 5800. Uh, 5800 yet. And to cool it, we just have the Noctua L9A. It is the black version, which I just thought looked cooler and sort of matched everything else. Um, I do know there's something about you have to 3D print like uh, a part to make the airflow work better on the Dan A4. Uh, I will need to investigate that. I'm hoping, honestly, I'm hoping I won't need to, but we will see. And then, of course, uh, power supply. So again, we're just using a 450 watt, uh, and that's in my effort to keep things sort of cheaper and more efficient. Um, and I also already had this power supply. Um, but certainly, if you upgrade to 650, then you could do a more powerful graphics card. But because of the CPU cooling limitations on the Dan A4, unless you, you know, really, and I've watched a lot of videos, unless you put in a lot of work, you're really stuck with a 65 watt processor. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, the modular cables in the bag, power cable, home pod for music as we work, uh, zip ties, screwdriver, Windows 10, I have the latest October update, Windows 10 on a flash drive, and a pocket knife for opening things. So yeah, we're pretty much ready to get building. I should mention uh, I have these two LED lights, they're desk lights by Xiaomi, and they're pretty great. Um, so. I actually ordered one and I got an extra one and didn't know what I was going to do with it until now and it makes for a nice uh, workbench environment. And yeah, I'm using a fully standing desk, uh, which is my normal desk, but it also works as a good workspace. And uh, you can see that's actually my older PC, which is a Ryzen uh, Zen 1 uh, 1700X on a full a mid tower ATX case. Um, and yeah, my iMac's hiding in the back, so uh, I've got uh, too many gadgets, one might say, but uh, they're all fun, and as a designer and developer, they all serve their different purposes. There you can see the whole setup, and uh, I'm excited, so let's get to it. <laughs> 